video i'll be showing you how we're going to be scraping with nnn a real estate listings website in sydney within minutes using crawl for ai an open source library that is free for you to use and we're going to host via digital ocean i'm going to walk you through this entire flow and you're going to have the actual nnn workflow for you to use for free as well you can check it out in the description now let's go into how we're gonna set up this NNN workflow and the methodology behind scraping in general. So first things first, if you're at a website, you can see whether they allow you to scrape by going to the website itself and then attaching onto it robots.txt. That is a website that is indicative of whether crawlers are allowed to crawl through the website and pick up that information. And as you can see here, the only disallowed site is the admin site itself. So that's great news. Then information bit number two is that if you go to sitemap.xml for that website, you will see the available pages that you can scrape and get that information off. So in this case, you can see they have a very specific sitemap that I can access for getting all their listings for sale. And that's what we're gonna feed into our scraper. And here is our NNN workflow and it comprises of two main parts. First one being the scraping with crawl for AI and the insertion into the RAG vector store. And the second part being the actual AI agent itself, which is invoked whenever we send a chat message with, to it and eventually retrieves that information that we vectorized and is able to give us accurate answer. Let's go step by step. And here in this first workflow, the idea is that whenever we click on test workflow, it will execute. And over here, we have what we call a HTTP request node, which when you click on it, we'll see the particular directory that I want to scrape from. And this over here is the website that has all the listings. And what we do here is just ping it in a sense, what that means is you just go to the website and you just get the information that it lists. And at that point, you're gonna get a response, which is gonna be an XML file actually. And what we need to do is convert it to a JSON because that is how it's best handled in this NNN workflow. Then you need to split it out. And the reason being is because once you get all this information, as you will see with me clicking right here, is that the information comes out in one big chunk. As you can see, you have one document object called the URL, and in it you have URL 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth. But that is not acceptable. What we need to do is break it down into a table like we did just now with the splitting node, and then that will allow us to loop over the items one by one. And if we go over here, we'll see this loop node and what it will do is it will loop over the items one by one. Now, the key here is to have a scraper in place to read each of these websites, right? And this is where Crawl for AI comes in. And the HTTP request node that we have set up here is actually the one that is gonna be doing the job for us. And as you can see, I have a URL set up already deploy through DigitalOcean with the crawling action happening. And we're gonna go into how to set this up right now. So we're gonna consult with the documents by crawl for ai for deploying a Docker instance. And it's very simple. We're here at the official documentation and we're at the Docker deployment. And all we're gonna do is scroll down and find the Docker image that we want to actually pick. And it's gonna be uncle code, Crawl for AI latest. Then we go to DigitalOcean. Make an account if you don't have one. This is going to be the easiest way for you to deploy an image on the platform. And we're going to create a app platform from our image. You see here various options. We're going to choose container image. And we're going to choose from Docker Hub the repository name. We're going to remove latest because it's actually the tag of the image. And then we don't want any credentials at this moment. So we're just going to click next. Over here, we can see some configuration details for our Docker container. And we're going to change the size of it such that we have four gigs of RAM. And the reason being is that there are occasionally four gigabyte spikes with your RAM whenever you're doing crawling and scraping. And we only want one container. So we're going to limit that right there. And because this is a test, we're not going to worry about doing auto scaling, but if you were in a production environment, you should incorporate that. And over here, we have our data center location to be Frankfurt, the name of the app, Lionfish app, that sounds fine. 
what I'm going to do is configure though also the public port and I'm going to change that to what the documents say 11235 right here and this is just like the communications port for our container and we're going to change it to here we're going to close and go ahead and just create the app and this is going to take a couple of minutes to spin up for about a couple of minutes our app is finally live and all what we're going to do now is go to settings and we're going to set an environmental variable that is key for us to authenticate to the container so whenever we want to send a request for calling we want to be passing an api token right such that it's accessible only to us and the way to do this is to go to settings and you're going to go to environmental variables right here at the app level and you're going to set over here a key for ai api token okay and in this case you know this is a demo so i'm just going to call it testing right and of course i'm going to delete this afterwards because like this you will access my container and rack up costs right but this is all you need to do just make sure you keep this safe and secure so now our container is ready to go and what we're going to do is just click on this link and that's going to route us to our live instance and here's the playground it works one of my websites so let's see what it comes up with with in this case, the website itself, as you can now. All right, and now that we have this crawler working, what we need to do is establish the authentication credentials. I've already done this, but I'll show you how to do it as well. You need to have the generic credential type and specifically of header auth. And the header auth will have a simple set of credentials, which is gonna have the following format. The name will be authorization, and the value here will be there and in our case the token that I added is testing right so if I hit save you'll see that it saved it and we can go ahead and test it out by just clicking over here this play button okay and the information has been successfully scraped and we can see over here that we have our data from this particular Sydney listing website successfully scraped now for us to see the real magic happen we need to let this flow work on its own and put the information into the rag vector store and superbase i have another video that i'm going to reference for you to visit if you want to see how i set this up but the essence of it is that the scraping takes place by having this websites picked up and looping them one by one and going into our vector store i can briefly show you that this vector store over here is going to be built by having information come in over the course of time, you can see over here, I have my first set of documents and we're gonna have like another set come in shortly. Now there is quite a lot of documents for them to be scraped. And you can see over here, there's 242 of them. And the chances are that there may be a failure point. And this may be due to, let's say, an edit in itself because having a lot of uh, run instances could result into that Docker container just being overloaded. But with having this wait time over here, we have the ability of gauging the workload that we put onto this init and instance. Now, what we do already have are six items, or rather eight of them that we've looped through. So why don't we go ahead and stop this flow momentarily just to test out that it indeed works. All right, we're gonna go ahead and test out the chatting function and we're gonna just open up and type, and we're just gonna type, are there any four bedroom listings in Sydney? And we're just gonna wait for the agent to work it's going into our vector store, retrieving the information and it says, okay, we have this Victorian filigree style terrace in Paddington and uh, another one in Gleb. So now that we know that it works, does it actually do the job? So let's go back to Sydney's Southern Buys listings and we can see over here that there is one in Paddington with four bedrooms and there is one in Gleb with four bedrooms as well. So we know it works and that is successful.